Good morning. This is Miss Biller Beck, and we're going to do the Chapter 7 practice test. This is going to be our key. So this, the first thing we're going to do is draw ankle pairs, um, and we're going to write if they're congruent or supplementary. So alternate exterior. Exterior means outside, like exterior paint is used on the outside of your house. So we're going to put an exterior angle here, and they're alternate exteriors, so they have to be equal. So look for the one that's the same size, and there. So these would be congruent. Okay, there's also a second set of alternate interior uh, exterior angles. So this one would be congruent to this one right here. So those that would be a second pair of alternate exterior angles. Now let's talk about vertical angles. Okay, so vertical angles, there's so many of them. So this is a vertical angle here. You don't need uh, parallel lines and a transversal. So this one we had parallel lines here and a transversal. Okay, so when you have vertical angles, you don't need them. You just need intersecting lines. So these are congruent. Okay, but there's a lot of vertical angles. These would be vertical angles right here. Okay, these would be vertical angles. These would be vertical angles. So there's a lot of vertical angle pairs that were that are here. Okay, consecutive or same side interior angles. So interior means you got it inside, like interior paint is used on the inside of the house. And if you use interior paint on the outside of the house, you will be very sad because it will not last and it will look bad very quickly. Okay, so consecutive same side interior angles will be inside the parallel lines as opposed to the exterior angles that are outside the two parallel lines. Okay, so interior means they're here. So we have this one and this one. So these would be an in. Um, consecutive interior angles. These are supplementary. There we go, supplementary angles, and they add to 180, 180 degrees. Okay, there's also another pair here. We could have done this and this. Those would also be consecutive interior angles. Okay, they are not congruent, so I'm not going to put a congruency tick mark there. All right, corresponding angles, or otherwise known as current spawning sandbars. Okay, corresponding angles. So if you have there ones on the inside and ones on the outside. Okay, so we could have also done this one here. Let's see, we could have done this and this. Those would have been corresponding angles too. Okay, so these are congruent angles. So I can put a tick mark there. I could have put corresponding angles here as well and here as well. So there's four different pairs of corresponding angles. And these are congruent. All right, alternate interior angles. Well, interior means inside. <clears throat> so they're inside the parallel lines and they're alternating one on one side of the transversal and one on the other. So we would have this would be an alternate interior angles right here. You could even make them connect like that and it'd be really cool. Isn't that cool? They're congruent. Okay, also this is an alternate interior angle to that one. So let's use concurrency ticks with those. All right, so there's two pairs of alternate interior angles there. 
Linear pairs. Well, these like the vertical angles don't need these ones. You both don't need parallel lines. So for this and for that, no parallel lines necessary. I guess we didn't need that little bubble there. There we go. So those two, no parallel lines necessary. All right, so a linear pair works together as a pair of angles that work together to make a line. Okay, so our first linear angle would be right here, right here on the top, and then this little one right here. Okay, so they are supplementary. And they add to 180. Okay, so there's also another vertical angle pair here. There's a vertical angle pair here. Okay, so they don't have to be horizontal. They can be vertical as well. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different types of vertical angle, our linear pairs here. So you have eight different types of linear pairs. Okay, so um, two adjacent non-supplementary angles. So adjacent means next to, okay, so this would be, supplementary angle to this one. So they make, they add to 180. They make a line. Okay, so if they're adjacent, they're two angles that are working together to make a line, like a linear pair. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, let me zoom in a little. So you can see better. Okay, so find X, Y, Z in the parallelogram. So when it says parallelogram, we know a lot just from what it's saying. So we know that this is a transversal and we have two parallel lines right here. So we've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, which means that this and this are consecutive interior angles and they're supplementary. And so that means that X 180 degrees equals X plus 112. So if we subtract the one, we manip manipulate that around, we get X equals 180 minus 112. So X is going to equal and that's going to be eight and 68 degrees. Okay, Y um, minus 10 is opposite 112 degrees. So that means those two are congruent because in parallelograms, opposite angles are congruent. So we just add 10 to both sides and we get y equals 122 degrees. We could check that quickly. 122 minus 10 is 112. So we have x, we have y. Okay, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. So that means 4z minus 3 equals 33. And it also means that Miss Billerbeck threw in an extra side just to mess with us. So we are not going to fall for it, right? Okay, so then we have 4z equals 36. We divide by four using a multiplicative inverse and we get z equals nine. You can check that, four times nine is 36, minus three is 33, boom. We did it. Okay, this one says find X and Y. This is my exterior angle of a triangle. And these are my two non-adjacent angles. And that's an adjacent angle. So what that says is X equals the sum of the two non-adjacent angles, which is 29 degrees plus 71 degrees, 
which ends up 100 degrees. So since these are linear pairs, we know y equals 180 degrees minus 100 because together they add up to 180 degrees. So that means y is 80 degrees. So 80 degrees plus 100 degrees equals 180 degrees. So there we have it, our answer. All right, this one's a little difficult, could be troubling. We have parallel lines here, we have a transversal here, and we have another transversal here. All right, so we have corresponding angles right here. So, well, that's easy. Y equals 157 degrees. So then we have a linear pair here. So we don't know what A is. Um, so we can say, well, A has to be 180 degrees minus 157 degrees, which equals, and that's going to be 30, 23 degrees. So we add that up, that's 61, um, plus 20 is 180. All right, so we have 23 degrees here. Um, and we don't know what X is, but we have an exterior angle to this triangle. And these are not touching that one. It, these are non-adjacent angles to that. So that means 134 degrees equals A plus X. And we know what A is. So if we subtract A from both sides, which we can substitute that in, we have 134 minus 23 degrees equals X. So X then is going to be um, 11 degrees. 111 degrees. Okay, so 111 plus 23 is 134. So there we have it. So we have X equals 111 degrees. Now we have to find Z. Well, Z is, a, is an alternate interior angle here. So this is also Z. Okay, and we know that these are linear pairs. So that means that Z equals 180 degrees minus 134 degrees. So Z would then be six and that'd be 46 degrees. So check it really quickly. 46 plus 34 is 180 and we have it. So Z is 46 degrees. Okay, so we've got our Y, we have our X and our Z. Okay. Now let's we'll take a look at this. We have the interior angle sum of a septagon or heptagon. That's seven sides. Okay, and we want the interior angle sum, so we're going to use the interior angle sum formula. And we're going to put seven in here. So that equals 5 times 180 equals, and that's going to be 900 degrees. So this is a good reference to use. The septicon into your angle sum is 900, 900 degrees, because when you get into a nonagon, that's just um, two more triangles. So you add 360. An octagon, just add 180, and you get your interior angle sum. Okay, what's the exterior angle sum of a 25-sided polygon? Ha, huh, this is one of those crazy Miss Billerbeck questions. Okay, so it's like the one where I, you know, did all those weird little exponents and like that and made it just ugly and um, did uh, some, like a million down here and then I put a zero out there and it just equaled one. Okay, that's like this. It's just 360. No matter how many sides a polygon has, the exterior angle sum is always 360 degrees. 
Okay, imagine if it had 100 sides, it'd be very close to a circle. How many degrees are in a circle? Well, full rotation is 360 degrees. So 360 degrees is the answer. Let's just box those in. Okay, what's the measure of an individual angle of a regular octagon? So um, regular means all the sides and are the same and all the angles are the same. So we have this formula that we're going to use. And we are going to divide by n the number of sides. And that'd be eight. Okay, so we have six times 180 degrees divided by eight. Okay, so we want to try to figure out how we can make this reduce so we very few multiplication steps. So we'll take a two out of both of these, then we're gonna take a four out of this, and that's gonna give us 45. Okay, so we have, then our interior angle sum is three times 45, which is 135 degrees. Okay, what is the measure of an individual angle of the exterior angle of a regular hendecagon? Now, all the books and most, uh, most math teachers don't talk about the 11-sided polygon, but since, you know, it gets left out and I hate to leave a misfit behind, I decided we learn what an 11-sided polygon is, so it's a hendecagon. Okay, so if we're doing exterior angles, it's 360 degrees divided by 11. So top dog goes into the house, 360, we divide by 11, we have 333, subtract, drop that down, that's a 2, 22, 8, we have a decimal, drop it down, 7, there we go, almost there. And that gives us two again. Now, when we do degrees, we tend to not do decimals. So 32.72 is going to round to 33 degrees. All right, last one. We want to find x, y, z of a rhombus below. Okay, so x, you should know this. Any rhombus or square or kite, we haven't talked about kites, but their diagonals intersect at right angles. So that should be an easy one if you know that. Okay, um, we want to find y. So y is an alternate interior angle here, y. Okay, in order to find y, we have to remember that in a rhombus and a square, these angles are bisected by the diagonal. So if we know that, we know that this is 39 degrees. Okay, and for a rhombus, the sides are all the same. Okay, so the sides are all the same. So that means I don't have to put the the measurement of right across, I can put it down below, and we have 6z minus 9 equals 45, this side. And then you add 9 to both sides, and you have 6z equals 54. You divide by 6 using a multiplicative inverse, and you get z equals 9 again, so 9 centimeters. And there you have it. That is the practice test. Good luck on the test. Talk to you later. Bye.